Hey folks, welcome back to the bench. Well, I've decided I'm going to start working on the quadcopter tonight. I know a lot of you want to see the uh, Jeep stuff, but I really don't want to work on a Jeep at the moment because I've been kind of obsessed or interested in the flying side of things. So I figured what I would do this evening is see if I can get the frame kind of rough together because without a frame, there's really no point in doing anything else because you need, that, you need that frame to work off of. So as I mentioned in the previous video, my plan is to use this uh, channel and just make an X configuration. You can either, or sorry, cross configuration. You, some cop copters are an X configuration, some are a cross. Some people make an H with a piece in the middle, which is the same as a pretty much the same geometry as the cross one. But, uh, so the first step to do this is to find my centers and then measure out from the center the width of the stock so that I can uh, cut the slot on one side and cut, cut the notch out on the other. That way they'll s slip together. And then at that point, I'll see if I'm going to try brazing it with uh, some of this stuff and the torch. It's just kind of an aluminum brazing rod. Or if it's going to be a purely bolt together affair. So uh, first things first is to find the center of both of these. I'm not going to cut it to length until I have the frame put together. So these are 48 inches. Yeah, I'm in Canada but I'm using inches. Go figure. Just from my woodworking stuff that I do, I prefer to work in inches. That's why my tape measure. Oh, sorry, lighting's kind of poor to show you, but I hate the tape measures that have both centimeters and inches on. So this one is purely inches. So, half of 48 is 24. So, I'll measure that out. It doesn't have to be exact because I'll be measure or cutting to length afterwards anyway, but might as well keep it as close as possible. Tape measure is pissing me off already. Sorry for the language. So there's 24 on that one. I'm going to grab my square. Come on. And run a square line up this. So, and now what I'm going to do, get my machinist ruler here. And I'm going to measure how wide these pieces are. I think they're half an inch. Yes, they are. Half an inch. So that's going to be a quarter inch on each side of that line. So measure right on the center of the line. Put another tick on each side. Quarter inch. Like so. Once again, mark it with my ruler. Just gonna leave a little bit of extra space. I want it to be a tight fit. But right there. And right there. So now what I gotta do is I gotta cut out up to there on both sides. I'm going to use my bandsaw with a metal cutting blade because that'll be uh, the easiest thing to do. And once I can cut the slots, I'll just have to maybe use my Dremel and slot it and then that'll be one side. So I'm going to go cut this and I'll be right back. Alright, I got the slot cut. I got to be careful because it bends real easy now. There's no support. I couldn't use the bandsaw, I don't know what I was thinking. The bandsaw doesn't have the capacity to be able to fit, fit this in with the blade. So I just used the old school hacksaw. 
So now this fits in just fine. I'll have to make sure that this stays flat. I'll have to use a straight edge. But I'll be putting a plate top and bottom that will kind of pull everything together as well. But in any case, the next step is to now cut out just the slot or whatever you want to call it in the top so that when this goes down, it sits flush. Now, I think what I'll probably just do is mark, mark each edge. Cut it slightly with the hacksaw and maybe just use a file and file it out. I'm not too sure, but uh, I'll get that done and uh, then move on to the next step. I got the slot done and of course I made it a little bit too wide, but uh, it's okay. I'll show you here. So that sits down in there. Quite a bit too wide. The nice thing about that uh, brazing stuff is it will fill in, assuming it's going to work. We'll find out if it does or not when I try it. Might end up ruining these pieces, but oh well. Just give it a try, and if this doesn't work, it'll be uh, on to plan B. I'm not sure what plan B is, but I'll have to come up with one if this doesn't work. Well, it was a bit of a pain in the butt to do, and it's not 100%, but. I got it kind of braced together. That's just to hold this frame steady. But the main support is actually going to come from the plates that I put on top and bottom. That'll kind of be bolted together. It'll pull everything together and straighten everything out because I got it, uh, these angles good. But up and down, it's a little bit off. But what do you expect? I, wasn't 100% sure if this plan would work out, so if it doesn't work out, I'll uh, figure something else out. Now, the next, like I say, the next step is to make a couple top and bottom plates. Got this sheet of aluminum, I think it's 16th inch. And what I'll do is I'll cut some squares to figure out what size, top and bottom, and then run bolts through here through the plate, through here, through the other plate, and suck it all up. But uh, not sure if I'm going to do that tonight or not. We'll see. I am going to head into the house for a bit and uh, get to see more of this video on this part. That means I did some more. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned for the next section. Talk to you later. Hey folks, well it's a couple days later but I decided to make this all one video so I have enough uh, actual content for one good video. So I'm going to continue on the frame. Here's the part that was braised together. And I got these plates cut. I started using my bandsaw and I don't know why I didn't think of it before. I uh, wasn't going so well so I switched to using my compound miter saw which works great for cutting this plate. So my plan for uh, the rest of this is to get these two plates mounted. I'm going to have one on top and then put one on the bottom for strength and then I can always make a smaller one underneath that to sandwich maybe the lipo and then have a place for the camera to mount. And I'll have to make some top ones or I'll just mount the electronics all up here in a certain way. So you can see I've drawn lines and when you line them up, they don't quite line up. You can see how this one is centered here, here. These ones are off. So I'm going to use the plate to help me straighten out the frame a bit. Um, so what I'll do, and I'm also going to cut these off a little bit so it's more of a, it's got, doesn't have these pointed edges. So I'll cut these, cut these. And then I think what I'll do is I'm going to uh, drill, I'm probably going to have two holes on each arm to mount, but I think I'm going to, and then the screws, I'm sorry, if we're going to go all the way through and grab this bottom plate and pull it all together, but I think what I'll do first to mount this top plate is I'm going to put the uh, inside holes in first, I'm actually going to rivet 
this on because once this is together these plates don't uh, don't need to come off so I'll rivet the top on and that'll kind of help pull everything into alignment a little bit and I can drill these outer holes and matching holes on this lower plate and bolt it all up and see how it turns out so first step is to measure and cut these off where I want to and drill some of these inside holes so I'll uh, do that uh, to begin with so I got the top plate done uh, I don't know how I'm going to finish it I might just take a scotch bright pad and uh, scuff it all up when I'm done but I'm not too worried right now but I've got my uh, you can see I put an extra hole right in the center because I thought it makes sense to start in the center and that way I can uh, it'll hold its orientation around its center axis while I uh, put the other rivets on these are the rivets I'm using it's just smaller guys keeping the weight down I got my riveter, pop rivet gun, and I think I determined that this is the axis that's the straightest, so I'm going to uh, start and use that to get this other, these other two arms straight. Now, I didn't, or maybe I'm mistaken, maybe it's the other axis, it's this axis that's straight, and this is the one that needs to be straightened out. Now, I've got a couple different length pop rivets. I'm just going to look underneath and see, and sure enough, those ones aren't long enough. So I've actually got a complete set, a whole bunch of different lengths and sizes, so I'm going to go and grab uh, some slightly longer ones. There's a longer one. I'm just going to take a look, test fit it through there, and see how far down it protrudes. Yeah, that's a lot better. So now, I'm going to line this up as needed. And, you know, I can't remember which axis was a straight one. I'm going to take my ruler and just kind of hold it up and see. Yeah, it is this length is a straighter one. So, so I'll start with the center rivet. And as well, I haven't drilled the holes in this frame yet. I can drill that after. I got my little Makita drill here. So first thing to do is to get this center rivet in. Make sure this is kind of close to where it needs to be. I can tweak it a little bit after, but usually it takes like two squeezes, probably per three. Rivets are nice in this. Ah, there we go because they're quite light. So now what I'll do is I've got this center line still on here, I can see. So I'm going to line it up on this arm first with the calibrated eye. I guess I could use a ruler, but it's not going to be 100% perfect. And I can take and drill out this hole. I find that this channel is quite soft. Uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw my vice grips on here, hold it, so it wants to move while I drill it, just to keep everything nice and centered. There we go. Yeah, it did move a bit on me. perfectly centered so what I'll do is I'll pull it over a bit throw my vice grips on while I pull it keep it where it needs to be or even just there we go this stuff is so soft it bends so easy I'm not too impressed with the strength of it I think it's like a it's meant to go around the edge of plywood to give a frame for whatever you would use a frame on plywood for but uh, let's give another minor 
tweak. There we go, that brought her in place. And this side still stayed aligned. That's good. Sorry, I'm not watching the viewfinder to make sure everything that you can see what I'm doing here. But. I don't drill my finger or my mouth. No, I got the mat. Oh well, that's what work mats are for, right? Shiny work mat means there's no work being done on it. So, there we go. That kept it nicely in line. So now I'll do these other ones. Now you can see this one actually stayed lined up pretty good. So I'll clamp that in and I'll finish off these other two pop rivets and uh, get the bottom plate ready to go and I'll be uh, back when I have that ready to bolt on. Well I've got her bolted together. It's kind of hard to show you here. There you see Kind of see what I've done. Get out of the light a bit. If I hold it up here, I've got the four bolts and lock nuts on the back side. I'll lock tight them as well. It'd be nice if I had some of the pan head uh, bolts instead of these ones, but so they'd be a little more low profile. I'll have to order some up. And also, I think what I'm going to do before I call it a night, so I'm actually going to take this center rivet out and put a bolt in there as well, that way it'll pull it together. So I got the hole on, on the back side, so you can maybe see. I'm just going to turn the camera a little bit. There, that's better. So you can see the hole on the back side. This thing's very difficult to video here. So put another bolt through there, and that'll be good. Now these edges don't quite line up perfect because of the way things went, but what do you expect for a first time home brew. I'm also, hopefully, I'm a little concerned about the weight, but I figured what I could do is once I get this all done, I can actually drill out this plate in spots to get rid of a fair bit of weight. I think that would, or even maybe use my jigsaw and make a triangular cut. Once I get my plate in the center made for uh, holding all the electronics and that, cut all this out and lose a fair bit of weight. But I'm happy with the progress so far. I'm just going to go grind this or drill this rivet out, put another bolt in there and uh, call it a night. So the next uh, video should, uh, I should have the uh, center electronics mount maybe done and maybe I'll uh, do the uh, motor mounts and that next. Oh and one other thing I'm a little bit concerned about is the strength of these arms. They're pretty flexy. You can see that. But what I figured what I could do, as long as I can lose some weight, is uh, with the, the rest of it is to cut some oak strips and put them in here and glue them in and I think that would uh, increase the strength a lot. So, But we'll get to that point when the time comes. And in any case, uh, stay tuned for the next video on this and take care and talk to you later.